Uh, I am doing these statistics at the time for no other reason than to raise the money, you know, to counter the argument that I'm getting thrown back at me why these are not worthy individuals to have a memorial. Right in the middle of that, there was a murder in downtown Dallas, a deranged um, vagrant, and we all were aware of him. He'd go around talking to street signs and hugging mailboxes and kissing, you know, light post and all this kind of thing. He pushes a police officer to the ground who was standing there writing a ticket. The gun clatters out. He picks it up, and a bunch of stupid kids going home after school start chanting, kill him, kill him, shoots the police officer in the face and kills him and then just wanders off humming to himself, confronted, shot dead by two off-duty cops. Headlines, Vietnam veteran goes berserk. I was working with the archives and the arch on this casualties. He says, well, get the, get the record of the, of the killer. I didn't know you could. I got the guy's record. He'd served about four weeks in the Navy, gotten kicked out on what was a psychological discharge. The guy was mentally ill when he came in the Navy, never served in Vietnam. Edmond, Oklahoma. Uh, there was a, a postal killing there where a postal worker killed 14 fellow workers, killed himself. Vietnam veteran goes berserk. And of course, that made every CBS, ABC evening news. Did the same thing. Got his military record. The guy never served in Vietnam. But I also, every time I did this, I'd present the evidence to the press. You screwed this story up. They refused to correct it. I have checked now in over 20 years, 20 or excuse me, 2,000, over 2,000 media stories. In 75% of them, there are major failings. And in 85% of those cases that I presented to the press, they refused to correct it. Now, after that, we raised the money. We uh, had the dedication. President Bush Sr. dedicated it. The Texas Memorial is the only memorial that's ever been dedicated by a U.S. president. The Reagan administration boycotted the one here in uh, D.C., which very few people remember. The highest ranking individual there was an undersecretary of the V.A. I then, though, started, this intrigued me with all this, you know, because I realized that these, these image makers, these people who were homeless on the street, these people committing suicide, and I started checking the suicides. First dozen I checked that were in the press, not one of them was a Vietnam veteran, even though the families of those men believe they were. Oh, he's been, you know, I married him, and I didn't know he'd been in Vietnam, and, you know, on and on and on. Uh, I started checking every time a Vietnam veteran popped up somewhere. Tom Clancy's high school buddy, a guy named Jerry Carroll, started writing no novels. Clancy would put the forward in the novel, and uh, his buddy author was a combat pilot in, uh, in Vietnam, which Clancy was very profuse in mentioning and everything else. Got the guy's military record. He'd never served in Vietnam. He'd conned Clancy the whole time. Book called Covert Warrior by Warner Smith. Uh, it was at the military book club. They were going to uh, bring it out, and they happened to send the manuscript to a friend of mine just to, re to review it because it was had a, a but you know kind of Navy SEAL type activity. And my friend said, "Burgett, he sent me excerpts. You know, look at this. I get uh, Warner's military record. He'd fabricated the whole thing. I sent it to the military book club, the record, told them how to get it. They completely blew it off and published that as the selection of the month, and then kept it in their catalog for months." you know, claiming the true story of clandestine operations in Vietnam. Shelby Stanton wrote over a dozen books on Vietnam history. He wrote one of the uh, editions of uh, Time Warner's History of the Vietnam War. Two tours in Vietnam, Green Beret, all these clandestine missions and everything. Uh, he was editor of Vietnam Magazine, got his record. The guy just made it up. Larry Cable, professor at the University of North Carolina, uh, did his dissertation, PhD, on counterinsurgency, wrote a book about it, became kind of famous in military circles. Uh, Air Force hired him to lecture at Hol Holbert Field, uh, you know, their Air Commando School and some others. Uh, Marine Corps hired him uh, that, to command and staff school. They were paying him $3,000 a month to lecture there. His story was he'd been a Marine enlisted man in Vietnam, combat, uh, got a, a battlefield commission, and then when he got out, he stayed with the CIA. I got his military record. I didn't get his military record. He didn't have one. He'd never been in the military. And I met him at Texas Tech, and I think Mark was there. 
I say met him, he was on the podium. He'd just gotten back from lecturing the NATO chiefs, uh, 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 the chiefs of staff, and I've been told that he lectured the U.S. Uh, joint uh, chairman and his staff. I checked his academics. He completely fabricated his undergraduate degree. He'd gotten kicked out of school and then forged the documentation to get into a master's program. Congressman Wes Cooley, Oregon, running for re-election. Combat veteran Korea. He would beat up on his opponents with his heroic record versus their zero military. I got his military record, which obviously nobody ever bothered to check. He was in basic training when the Korean War ended. Captain Roger Edwards, commandant of the Marine Corps here just a few years ago, made him an honorary Marine just before his retirement. Uh, he'd been in the commandant's office as a staff officer liaison from the Navy. Uh, he'd been a Green Beret medic, Silver Star, Bronze Star, Purple Heart, gotten into an NROTC program, became a naval officer, got his record. He was a ward boy in a hospital cleaning out bedpans and changing sheets. I was able to get him charged, court-martialed, and I was in the court when they marched him to prison. Lieutenant Commander Jacobs spent an entire career in the Navy wearing the Navy Cross and Seal Trident. Um, got into that, and he was, didn't even join the Navy until uh, 74. He was a uh, assistant nurse. The Navy sent him to college, and he was able to intercept his transcripts, recraft them, convincing the Navy he had graduated from college, and they uh, swore him in as an officer with the ROTC unit. The guy never got a college degree. When I got into that, Borda was the CNO, Chief of Naval Operations, and they just shut me down. They would not, the Navy always covers this up for some reason. They think their officers are never going to be open to scrutiny, and if they do something wrong, nobody's going to know about it. I sued the Navy, I sued Borda, I sued John Dalton, Secretary of the Navy, and I sued Janet Reno. And that story is in my book. Dan Rather did a uh, documentary called The Wall Within. It was about all these screwed up veterans, six of them who had post-traumatic stress, and they talked about assassinating uh, peaceful villagers and putting down communist paraphernalia to make it look like the communists did. Another one talked about how he skinned women for hours and you know what you know the ooze and goos going through his fingers. I got their military records, which CBS obviously never did. Five of them just made it up. The sixth one actually was a combat veteran. His stories were completely implausible, but they were just isolated things where it didn't happen with his unit, and of course, I was not able to prove the sixth one. Mike Wallace, 60 Minutes. There's a veteran named Joe Yandel in Boston, Mass he's in the uh, Massachusetts State Penitentiary. Vietnam veteran comes home drug addicted robs gas stations, uh, they kill, he and his buddy kill a proprietor, they go to prison life without parole. He starts a chapter of the Vietnam Veterans of America in prison and becomes the state president. They have the convention in the rec hall. Vietnam Veterans of America has over 100 chapters in prisons, state and federal, where they recruit murderers, rapists, pedophiles, and of course you don't have any proof of any of this when you go to prison. When they get out of prison, they're full-fledged members. Uh, when I got into this story, I checked the records of the three people running for the presidency of the Vietnam Veterans of America who spent an extraordinary amount of time in front of Congress, congressional committees up here. Two of them were convicted killers. Joe Yandel, the Boston Globe, uh, the, the Vietnam Veterans of America.